Hey y'all, how's it going? It is Sunday morning. What is the date? June the 13th. Seems like I always mow hay on June the 13th. This must always, it's like a pattern. It gets dry right up to June the 13th, but hay is looking good. It looks a lot better than it did last time I was showing y'all some hay. Um, I actually got up some since the last video and I was getting four round bales of the acre which is probably about average around here for good producing hay. Um, four by five round bales that is. But I'm getting ready to start mowing. I, my plan is over the next couple days to mow about a hundred acres and that's unheard of for me. Um, I've never done that much at one time, but that is my plan. I have about a week of uh, good weather, hopefully, what they're showing. Good Lord willing, there will be a week of good weather, and uh, I'll get up a lot of hay. So some of it's going to be square baled, some of it's going to be round baled. But Right now, we're going to put the attachment on the draw bar of the tractor for the mower. I'm going to show you all that and how that works. And then we're going to go get started mowing. A uh, 10, acre, 10 acre field and then we're going to go to the bent road where I have about 80 acres. So, hopefully all that's done by the end of the week. It's going to be a long, long, hard week. But, I think I can do it. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you got to do when you get ready to hook this new mower up. Uh, before, I would just go hook to the draw bar of this tractor, and uh, I didn't have to do anything. Hold on just a minute. I'll turn that racket off so you can hear me. Uh, before, just hook to the draw bar, hook the PTO up, and the hydraulic lines. All right, it's a little different now. I have to run a 1,000 RPM shaft, which is... The PTO shafts right here, and I know you farmers know exactly what I'm talking about, but some of you other people may not, so I'm going to explain it right quick. There's two different shafts. Actually, there's three different shafts that are common on a tractor. One is one is a 540 shaft, and it has its own type of splines. You can see these splines on this. This is actually a 1,000 shaft um, with the a small 1,000 shaft and. I don't remember how many splines it is, but it's got a lot more than a 540 shaft. A 540 shaft has a wider, a much wider spline. You can see it easily. If I had a tractor sitting here, I'd show it to you. But my mower, this new mower runs on 1000, which is different than any other of my, our attachments, except for the straw blower that we use on big jobs. But anyway, the difference is not only the splines, but the speed that this thing turns. The 540 shaft spins at 540 RPMs um, at, uh, at uh, whatever this tractor is rated. I think it's 1,950 engine RPMs is what you're supposed to run the tractor engine. And then the PTO runs at 540. Now, with the 1,000, how you what you do is there's a snap ring. You take this out and you pull this out flip it over on this particular tractor and put it back in and it gives you these 1000 splines and it also allows you to go into the computer and change the speed of the PTO to 1000 RPMs so at the same engine RPMs with the tractor on this particular one it's the same engine RPMs but it speeds this PTO shaft up to 1000 RPMs so it runs almost twice as fast as the 540 shaft, just not quite. Um, so that's one difference. I have to, most all my implements are 540. So what I have to do now is when I come from the baler, which is 540, I have to flip that shaft over. The last thing it run on this though was the mower. So it's already been done. One thing that hadn't been done though, because I've been pulling a seed drill, is you got to put this thing right here on. This is the hitch the draw bar hitch for the mower. Now it's not difficult to put on and it doesn't take very long and you already have to switch the shaft anyway. Um, and the shaft, the, the, the mower that I have is big enough. 
I do not believe they offered in a 540. So it's not like I had the option to stay with a 540. So I would be here changing this shaft anyway. It's not that much more work to put that uh, attachment there on. I'm gonna show y'all how I, how I put it on. So it's mostly been set up already. So basically all I have to do is I have this, this pin here you just slide this on here like this and then you just drop this pin in like a hitch pin and then you put the the uh, safety pin in it just like a hitch pin I'm having trouble hitting the hole this morning So I got the safety pin in. Now, you can do this with an air gun and you can speed this process up even more. But I, I pull it back to get the slack out of the pin because typically you're pulling. And it takes an inch and an eighth wrench and you tighten these bolts. You got your little chain, uh, safety chain hook right here is already made on this, so the safety chain don't drag the ground. But now, you got it snug. It's got to be torqued to about 200 foot pounds. So, I'll get over here so y'all can see. This is what I normally do. I don't torque it. I just get it as tight as I can with two wrenches. So far, haven't had any trouble. So I got those two. Like I said, if you really want to do this fast, you can do it with an air gun. But, I mean, I can put it on in like two minutes without an air gun. So. And then, once you get this done, this thing is extremely easy to hook to the mower. So we're done now. That's all you gotta do. The mower, and I actually ran into a problem with this mower. It has one issue, but I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. Right now, I'm going to uh, hook it up, show you how to hook it up. Pretty simple. So what I'm doing, back in this draw bar I'm gonna try to show you what I'm doing and while I'm doing it so it might make it a little more difficult but you just back this hitch thing I need to get over this a little bit you just back it under the mower and I've never seen this done before until I bought this mower but it's it's pretty simple For some reason I'm <laughs> Telling you how simple it is while I'm not being able to do it. I guess it's because I'm holding this camera. But... And there. Yes, I know, I know. Forgot to take it out of gear. All right. Once you back that thing up, what you have here is a pin or a hook, a big old hook that sits down on that pin when you let the jack down. So you just, I'm gonna turn the jack. And there, so it's basically hooked up to the tractor. So that's all there is to that. Other than lock, locking it, you got a safety lock. So with the safety lock, you got this pin right here. And then I'm trying to figure out where to set y'all so I can do this. But you got a little thing you raise up right here. And you put the pin in the hole with it. That's what locks it to the tractor. I'm gonna do that. Just raise this up, put the pin in, then you put the
put the safety pin in. Put the safety chain. Make sure to put the jack away. So you take the jack, put it up here, turn it like this, like that. There was one extra step here. You got to put this. Uh, you got to raise this jack leg up. is the PTO and the hydraulic hoses. So, PTO. PTO's done. next thing I was going to say was is this mower the problem with this mower was and I've already fixed it it wouldn't fit in here it would not fit in this barn it would not fit between these poles and I think these poles are on 14 foot centers <clears throat> and uh, the problem was these signal lights right here were mounted the other way and they stuck out here well this thing only has about three inches of clearance to get in here and you have these six inch pieces sticking out on each side it just wasn't gonna work so I figured out that if you took the one off of this side turn it around and put it on that side on the inside take that this one which was on the other side turn it around put it on the inside and this has plenty of clearance right here. It's almost like it was made to go that way if you wanted to. Um, and you still can get to your adjustment bolt. But yeah, now it'll fit right in my barn here where I used to keep the other one. So, or where I kept it most of the time or sometimes. Um, yeah, so now it'll fit in the barn. So problem solved. But anyway, we're gonna take this thing and go mow some hay with it lots and lots of hay and we'll see y'all in hay okay one more thing here I, I just thought about i gotta fix this door if y'all been watching my other videos of this mower there was a piece of baling twine right around this door holding this door shut and uh the warranty ran out on the baler twine so they had to fix the door finally um but what happened was the reason there was a problem to begin with when they delivered the mower and i don't fault the guy at all because i would have done the same thing there's no latch on this door and the only thing that holds it shut is this cylinder over centering and it's not connected because he couldn't get the he brought me this cylinder and he couldn't get it in there because of where it was parked so i had to hook it up but there's no latch so he's going down the interstate right well this door it's just held shut by that cylinder. The wind gets this door and wham! Rips the, rips the end off this cylinder and breaks it. All right, brand new mower. And uh, they took care of it. Of course, you know, it happened while they had it in their possession. But um, he got me that cylinder. But he, you know, of course, when he got here with it, we was wanting to use it. So we just put, he put baler twine around it coming down the interstate. 
and that's just the way I've been running it. it was with baler twine holding it together but I don't think the door is going to be an issue pulling it with a tractor at normal speeds cause yeah it's just not going to be an issue but going down the interstate probably hitting 50 60 mile an hour with it you need to tie the door shut so anyway that's why there was baler twine on it i know several people asked some people may not even notice but anyway see y'all later all right so here's probably the worst thing about this mower right here and i just got to get used to it but look in this you can look in the camera here and see too much glare maybe just look behind me this is a four lane road with you know four lane road has pretty wide uh lanes but i'm all the way from the dotted line and the other side's running on the rumble strip <laughs> better watch what i'm doing here i'm gonna run it into the guardrail i got a car coming around me but anyway i gotta get used to that but my uncle's been pulling a 13 foot and around here for several years and if he can do it i can do it um, he also has a 15 foot that goes on a, like a dolly and you turn it sideways pull down the road but i think that would be when you get to the field you'd have to find somewhere to park your dolly sometimes i don't have anywhere i can park something like that uh out of the way you'd have to park it in the hay field and then mow a while and then come back and move it i guess but um i was going to talk about the way this thing hooks up when i first seen this the way it hooks up i thought no, i ain't gonna like that um I, and i was like i'd probably rather have a two-point hitch which is you hook the two lift arms up but after I've done it a couple times, I believe I can do it just as fast as hooking the two-point arms up because you got to fight with them things sometimes. I mean, sometimes you have to like physically fight with them. You get them, you get them on there, and pull the tractor up and back it up. If you don't have a quick hitch, now if you have a quick hitch, which I don't have and I don't plan on getting, because it would just be in the way of everything else, and it'd be something you have to take off when you're not mowing. Um, but not running a quick hitch I think this is would be the better way to go just what little I've used it because you don't have to fight with anything uh, the lift arm you don't have to fight pins in and out or on get them get the arms on the pins and get the tractor in just the right spot and everything you just I know you have to have a wrench or air gun but you can get buy a couple of cheap wrenches and put in the toolbox of the tractor or do like I do just back up to the shop there and do it um, and, but you know I, I literally put that thing on there in two minutes and then you just back up to the mower and just let it down on it it's really simple to hook the hit to the mower it's a whole lot simpler than hooking up two point hitch so there's not really any fighting um, to get it on there it's just takes a little bit of time you got to switch the PTO shaft anyway so you're there anyway um, it doesn't take that long so I thought I didn't think I would like it but it does it's not a big deal it's not really a big deal now ask me that again when I'm like trying to beat a thunderstorm or something and I got to switch them out but uh, typically right after you mow and you're unhooking the tractor I typically hook the baler up to the tractor you know way before I put them bail anyway so typically I shouldn't be in no real big hurry when I do it and of course when you hook it up it ain't no big rush so anyway those are my thoughts on the way the hitch works I'm I'm satisfied with it when I first seen it I thought man I'm probably gonna have to get them to order me the two-point hitch and I'll switch it out but after I've used it I'm like nah I'll, I think I like it I think I like it just as good or probably maybe even better than two-point hitch I have a two-point hitch on a hay rake and you have to go you know you have to fight one side on and then you have to walk around the tractor and go to the other side and fight it on and it ain't terrible but it's easier than a three-point hitch because you don't have to use the top link it's just one you know one less link but uh, you you know it's still just one of those things that it's a little more difficult than than this actually i think so all right
let's get to the hay field. I don't know if I'll film any in this hay field, but when I get into the bigger ones, I'll probably start filming. I brought the drone, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, look at me on this road. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that's nice. Let me get back over here where I've got the tire on the edge of the road. Let's see here, right there is tire on the edge of the road. I'm in the other lane, like three foot. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so I've been mowing for, well, I don't know this. This thing over here says, right here, this work is 3.6 hours that's 3.6 hours that i've actually had the mower down and mowing like actually mowing whenever you turn the you know whenever i put it down it turns the gps on and that's what it's reading that works so that's 3.6 hours actually mowing but there's you know i've been out here longer than that obviously because you got your turnarounds and road riding on the road to get to different fields which this is my second field and i'm getting ready to i'm leaving it fit right now going to my third one which is just across the road here and this field is a little over 20 acres it's like uh 24 or 23 and a half something like that the last field i was in was a little over 11 acres so i'm I'm right at uh, 35 and a half acres. Um, it says I'm doing six acres to the hour, but I've got to be doing more than that because if you take that and divide it into that, it's, it's closer to like 10 acres an hour, but they must be figuring, this is an average, so they must be figuring even while I'm traveling, time and and uh, all that but actually mowing like when the mower is actually cutting grass it's actually cutting a lot higher um, acres per hour than what it's saying according to my calculations correct me if I'm wrong I guess but uh, but if you take into account all the road time and turning around and all that stuff then yeah I guess it is probably about six acres an hour. But um, I don't know why you would. I don't know. I don't know which way you, it would be the correct way to figure it. I guess that would be. I hate pulling out right here. You cannot see nothing. Look at this. Is there anything coming? Can y'all tell? You just have to kind of ease out here and. If something's coming, they just gonna have to stop. <laughs> or I'm gonna have to stop one. Okay, so we're gonna go down here. Look at this. Look at this road compared to my mower. Uh, this, this road, the mower is about as wide as the road is down here. But right here is my next field. This is the big farm. This is about 60 acres, 60 plus acres over here. So start mowing on it and that's probably where we'll well I know that's where we're going to end up quitting when I get, get decide to stop today and I'll be picking up tomorrow where I left off so Shannon's on her way out here to bring the bring my kids let them ride with me for a little bit must have done some tar and gravel out here they always tar and gravel stuff when I get new equipment. That way I sling it all over it first thing. I guess just get it over with because it, it happens every time. When I got the, when I bought the square baler, they tarred and graveled every road that I was trying to bail on. And I threw tar and gravel all over that thing. I had to clean it all off. It's aggravating. But I guess that's what they do in the summertime is tar and gravel everything. All right. Uh, I got to get this gate open and get in this place here and start mowing. I'm probably gonna mow on the lower side of the driveway first cause that's the smaller part. We'll go ahead and get it done. And it's actually, and it's also around the house. So we'll go ahead and knock that down. It looks pretty good. There's some weeds in it, but it looks pretty good for the most part. 
All right, we'll work on them weeds. Once it starts growing back, I'll spray them a little bit here and there. Try to get a second cut in this a little bit cleaner. All right. Talk to y'all. I ain't never mowed here before. Give it a try. Just more hay, right? I'm going to run into something stupid. And I've been over most all this land looking for stuff and trying to learn it. Got a bunch of limbs and spread fertilizer and lime. fairly clean. There's a few places there's some shit uh, There's rock sticking out of the ground that couldn't do nothing with unless you get a hammer out here. I didn't bring a hammer. gets grown to be more tree limbs laying out the way. Well, that's my experience anyway. Cut tree limbs, cut tree limbs, clean up tree limbs, and then come back and mow the hay and there's still tree limbs in the way. I mean, this like fell off the trees. I guess dead limbs and stuff, they fall off. these flowers I think this is what they used to grow here um, anyway I stopped and got Shannon a couple I thought they were pretty they're purple so I'm gonna lay them over here she'll be here in a little bit 
Oh, get off her. I don't want an ant. Get in there. Get ride right there. All right, I'm gonna keep mowing. Oops, about to drop my camera. I'm gonna keep mowing and try to pay attention to what I'm doing here. <laughs> 